there's this sort of desperation that builds in all of the characters over the three days and that helps to build a sense of urgency too because they just sort of gradually become more desperate to flee this this impending doom technology was so much more complicated and, and not child friendly in those days it was all kind of cassette tapes and kind of playing you know the games took like 10 minutes to load and all these things like that And obviously it has the most transporting and most touching and most sad ending sequence of any game that I've ever played. Um, that final fight is so, so good. Um, it's just, it's just amazing. And uh, you're sort of, you know, emptying water from lakes and, and draining places. And uh, it's just, you know, you're, you're thinking on so many levels at once that the puzzles were uh, whilst brutal they were incredibly satisfying to to uh, to complete brothers Isaac probably they were all inspired by something that happened to the developers and I think when people do that that's when we get the most interesting games because it's human in a way it's not Call of Duty GLaDOS was turned into a potato on a failing battery, like with a really limited charge and could only pipe up every couple of minutes and was still the most vivid presence in any game of any character. I, I, I nearly I nearly tore up my uh, my designer card at that point. It's like, I can't top that. That's, <laughs> they've, they've won computer games. When my brothers and I were kids, we took a bunch of cardboard and cut out squares and converted our, our living room into a movement grid and then used our X-Men action figures and made our own like 3D board game that way. And so I'm, I'm very, very partial to anything that has a top-down movement grid style of play. It's, it's just, it's, it was a game on a platform that was had a fairly small audience and I don't know how many people played it ultimately. It was, it was obviously a popular game, people remember it fondly, but how big was it ultimately, you know? Uh, it was just something, the idea of a game letting you fail, it just didn't occur to me that I was allowed to not get through that bit. So yeah, I, I think I got through it and, and didn't think anything of it until I read somewhere, oh, well, you don't have to, you know, but I think after the first completion, I was like, I want to go back and get, and get everything. And I think I looked and realized, oh, that that's actually a moment where the plot changes based on what you do. So it was, uh, yeah, it didn't occur to me that you could lose that bit. So I didn't let it. Like when I first bought it, it was three pound in CEX or something, and obviously I'd seen sort of like the promotional material and stuff like that, and I thought that you know this was just going to be some sort of real sexist game. But I bought it and sort of thought, you know, if I play it and it's really bad, at least I might be able to sort of write something about it, kind of thing. My favorite game. 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 My favorite game is.